we're going to talk about amplitude modulation. We've done amplitude enveloping, which is where we trigger an envelope that turns a sound on and off over time. Amplitude modulation is using a signal instead of an envelope to make that change. So the thing about a signal is that it cycles. So we're using an oscillator to increase and decrease the volume of a signal. So the signal that we use to increase and decrease the volume is called the modulator. And the signal that we perform that on is called the carrier. In simple amplitude modulation, there's no real difference because we're multiplying two signals and creating a new signal. But there are cases, as we'll see, where it makes a difference. So we're gonna look at tremolo here. So tremolo is an effect that does exactly what I just described. We increase and decrease the amplitude of a signal, but we do so at a slow rate so that we can hear that increase and decrease clearly. And that's an effect called tremolo. So I have a low frequency oscillator here. It's just an oscillator running at a low frequency. And this is at three hertz. So in this case, this is a modulator and I have a carrier signal at 220 hertz. So let's play that. So we hear a 220 hertz wave increasing and decreasing three times per second because we have a low frequency oscillator running at three hertz increasing and decreasing the amplitude. And the rest of this, this is a mute. And this is a regular amplitude control. Okay, so amplitude modulation. This is the exact same patch, but instead of a low frequency oscillator, we have a regular oscillator that runs at a rate that we could hear. If this oscillator was connected directly to the DAC, we could hear a 300 hertz tone. They're both audible signals, so it doesn't really matter which one is the carrier and which one's the modulator in this case. So here, neither of those frequencies are present once we multiply them together. What happens with amplitude modulation is that we create sidebands at the sum and the difference of these two frequencies. So the sum of these two is 520 hertz, and the difference is 80 hertz. So we have a waveform with those frequencies instead of the ones you see here. So multiplying those by each other generates sidebands, and the original frequencies aren't present. So we can hear that 220 isn't present here. Now, the oscillator is running, so we could add it to this bus. We could just patch it directly or patch it to this mix. Same thing with the 300 here. So we actually have access to four frequencies with only two oscillators here. And that relationship scales up exponentially. So if we had three oscillators like we do over here, we could patch them in such a way that we had eight frequencies. But before we do that, let's look at ring modulation. So ring modulation is a common technique in audio effects. It's the exact same thing as amplitude modulation, but the carrier modulator relationships matter this time. So this is the carrier and this is the modulator. And we add a signal offset so that when we multiply these two together, we get the same sidebands that we did here. So 80 Hertz and 520 Hertz by adding this frequency and that frequency together and also taking the difference between those two. But also having this signal offset means that 220 will be there as well. So we're multiplying 220 by one to get 220 and also those sidebands. And so the thing about these techniques is they work on any kind of signal. So ring modulators are often used with samples or live sound. I've got a sample here.
So that same thing through a ring modulator. So every frequency that makes up this vocal sample is having sidebands generated. So the sidebands sound like frequency shifted versions above and below the vocal sample. And we also have the unaltered vocal sample there because we're multiplying by one as well as this oscillator. In the case of regular amplitude modulation, we won't hear that original sample. We'll only hear the sidebands. And here with the tremolo, we're just going to be hearing that amplitude move up and down at that 3 hertz rate. So we saw with amplitude modulation and with ring modulation, we're creating these sidebands, whether that's with a sine wave that we can hear the sideband frequencies very clearly, or with a sample or any other signal where it sounds like a frequency shifted version of that original signal we used. Now if we take an amplitude modulated signal and do another round of amplitude modulation on it, we get some in difference frequencies at two different stages. So in this case, we have to take both sidebands that are generated at the first stage and into account in the second stage. So in the first stage, we have the sidebands 80 and 520. So we take 500 plus and minus 520 and 500 plus and minus 80 to get four sidebands at the second stage. We have 1020, we have 580, we have 420 and 20. And so we can also add the oscillators back into the signal. So I can patch in 220, 300, and 500 directly. I can patch in that first stage of amplitude modulation directly. And now the same amount of oscillators, and we'll have a much denser timbre. So one of the benefits here is that we can get really dense tones without a lot of oscillators. The downside is that we just get the sum and difference as our sidebands, and we don't have a lot of control over that other than changing these frequencies, which we may or may not want to do. So if we were to compare this to additive synthesis, we can get dense tones with fewer oscillators, but we have less control over what the specific frequencies in those tones are. So with amplitude modulation, we're often adding two sidebands at a time each stage uh, that we take on. So we saw the case where there are multiple stages, and every stage we're adding two sidebands. And sometimes we don't want to do that. So we might have a complex amplitude modulation patch, and there might be some frequencies that naturally occur from the process that we don't want. There's a single sideband technique that we can use to isolate a sideband. So the Hilbert object takes a signal and outputs that same signal and a phase shifted version of it. What we see here is we have both signals that we're using in an amplitude modulation operation, and we're doing it twice with a phase shifted version and the original version of each signal. And then we're subtracting the result of those multiplications from each other so that we can cancel one of the sidebands. So in this case, we're going to produce only the sideband at 520 hertz. So this is gonna cancel out the lower sideband and 
allow the higher sideband to remain so that we get only the sideband that adds these two frequencies together. Now, if we had a complex timbre coming through, that might cut out a giant range of frequencies. Because as we saw here, every frequency that comes through generates sidebands with each stage of amplitude modulation.